Strings are an easy way in which you can get textual data inside of Python. However, strings are very powerful in that we can do a lot of things with them. Everything we've done till now in input, it inputs as a string and then we convert it into an integer. However, it's still a string before it gets into that integer conversion. So we can actually convert strings into integers, into floating point, into other data types and things like that. However, a string is nothing more than just a, a list of characters. So we can actually convert that, say a equals lists below. And if we print that, notice it's just a list of characters, the H, then the E, then the L, then the L, then the O. And so what we're going to do now is look at the more advanced things that we can do with strings because it's very important that, well, whenever we have a string or some sort of input, we can actually use that input and get it into a form where we can understand it. So hopefully most people have heard of what is known as a CSV. It stands for comma separated value. Now, if you go into Excel, you can actually do file save as into a CSV. And it's just a textual format where all of your uh, cells, your columns are separated by commas. And then your rows are separated by new lines. So for example, let's say I had an Excel spreadsheet that said first name, last name, and then age or something like that. So these would be separated by commas. So in my case, it'd be Steven, comma Mars 37, okay? So let's put another one in there. John Doe, and we'll say he's 44, something like that. So what we're going to do now is, hopefully you can see this is a line, so it's textual data. It's S-T-E-P-H-E-N, comma, M-A-R-Z. So the very first thing I'm gonna show you with advanced strings is how we, we, we can separate, it's known as splitting, this string into component parts inside of a list. So for example, I want Steven, Mars, 37. I don't want the commas, that's just to separate the values, but I want those three values. So what I'm going to do is line equals Steven comma Mars 37. So what I'm going to do is you can see line because it's in the double quotes. So remember, string literals either have double quotes or single quotes. You get to choose which one you want. I typically use the double quotes because most other programming languages use the double quotes to represent a string. So in this case, line is now has its own functions involved. So let me show you what they look like. So you can see the whole bunch of them. So the ones you really care about are the ones without the underscores. The ones with the underscores belong to what is known as a class, and they actually mean something to the language, like GE stands for greater than or equal to. And so those are functions that Python actually uses to be able to compare them, to set them equal to, to set attributes about them, things like that. So the one we're looking for is there's a whole bunch of ones like is upper upper translate title. The one we're looking for is split, which is right here. So what split does is we can actually specify how we want it to split and split returns a list. So let's take a look at what we're going to do. So line is a string. I'm going to say my list equals line dot split and I want to split these on the comma. So now let's print my list and see what it looks like. So notice, now what it did is it took the commas away. Now we have a list of three elements. So let's write a for loop. We'll learn loops a little bit later, but essentially what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna print out each individual element side by side. Steven, Mars, 37, very good. And also to show this, No, it has three fields, so it prints out Stephen Mars 37. So now what I do is now I have each one of these into their individualized format. And I could also move it for, further because I know the age is going to be integer. So I can say my list two, which is the third field, equals int my list two. Now when we print it, notice 37 is no longer a string. It's now an integer. So there's many things we could do, but split, what it does is it takes a single, what is known as a delimiter in this case, or a separator delimiter means the same thing. In this case, it's the comma. Now, if I didn't put commas in there, instead I put spaces or something like that in there, now what's going to occur? Let me remove these because we'll get an error. Notice there are no commas to split on. And so what happens is you always get the string back in the first element. So it always gives you a list, even if it can't split on something like that. But because I use spaces instead of commas, there's nothing to split on. And so it returns in the very first element, whatever you're doing. So how we can double check that is we can say, if the length of my list, and you'll learn about if statements a little bit later, is not equal to three, because we're expecting three different elements, means the line wasn't right. And you can see it's a malformed line. Now let's put those commas back in. And now we're good to go, okay? So now we have list 
we'll call this the Mars list, and we'll call this the Doe list. Okay, so split is very nice. Now notice whenever we split, unless we convert to an integer like I did before, everything comes to be a string. It's in a list, but each individual element is a string. If you wanna convert those to an integer or float, you must use the proper int or float or whatever you wanna convert it into. So let's take a look at other things that we can do with a string. There's a function called replace. And what replace does is it actually generates a brand new string. It doesn't modify these strings in place. Strings are known as immutable. Immutable means that as soon as I set them, I can't change them. However, I can actually change the value by returning a brand new string. But the actual string I have here, Steven space Mars, cannot be changed. Now, if I did something like this, or something like that, then what occurs is it does exactly what we want it to do, is it puts goodbye in the end. However, what happens is line plus goodbye is generated as a brand new string. So Stephen Marsh still exists out there, and so it has to generate a brand new string. That's why whenever you do strings that are quite long for large amounts of data, this is actually a pretty expensive task for the computer to do. So let's say I want to replace, let's, let's go back to our comma separated values. Let's say we had a, a line that was space separated, but we don't know whether it's space separated or comma separated. Well, what we can do is we can do what's called a replace. So line.replace says, here's what I wanna go from, here's what I wanna go to. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all spaces and replace them with commas. Now, I'm going to demonstrate that this does not modify the string in place. You'll notice that the line I print on line 11 is the exact same string that is on line seven. Replace did not change it. So just like I showed you with that plus operator, we have to say line equals line.replace. So what happens is it generates a brand new string where all the spaces are turned into commas. So now notice I have Steven comma Mars comma 37. So replace will go through every single one and replace all spaces with commas. Next function we have at our disposal is find. So if I wanna return an index where I can find a certain substring, we use find. So for example, if I wanna find Mars, I can print that. And so what happens is the find operator or find function will actually return you the index in the string where Mars is first occurred. So if I did print a sub a, I'm sorry, line sub a, what that's going to do is it's gonna print the very first character that matches, in this case, sub eight. Notice that's where the M starts. Now let's see what happens if it can't find that. So M-A-R-S instead of M-A-R-Z. Well, it doesn't exist in the string, but let's see what happens whenever we try to run it. Notice the seven prints, and we'll see why whenever we talk about uh, slices, but it returns negative one. So it really makes no sense to have a, an index of a negative number, especially after find. So a find, if it cannot find the value that it's looking for, will return negative one. Otherwise, it returns the index of whatever it found. Let's say we want to find STE, S-T-E. Whenever we do this, we notice that S-T-E is found right here. So it finds that and says, okay, the very first occurrence of this is at index zero, which whenever we print out, we can see, for example, it is capital S. Now, capitalization matters. Lowercase S-T-E is not the same thing as uppercase S-T-E. So notice we get seven negative one if we have lowercase S-T-E, and we get S zero for uppercase S-T-E. So what if we want to find multiple? So let's say there's Steven Steven. Well, find returns the very first instance. If we want to search from the reverse of it, we use what is known as rfind. rfind says, instead of going from the beginning of a string, do a reverse search. Start at the end of the string and work your way towards the beginning. What I've done here is I did a find, and notice it, print, it does exactly what we expect to do. It prints out the very first occurrence of STE. With the R find, it prints out the very last occurrence of STE, which is right here. That's why we get S and 13. It's the same thing, except now it's just a different index. And once again, R find is the same way. If we put lowercase STE, it won't be able to find it. It returns negative one. And finally, another thing we can do is count. So if we want to count a certain character or 
let's say we had a comma separated values. And before we even try to split on it, we want to count the number of commas that are in there. But notice it counts zero. So then we can write an if statement and say, okay, well, there's no commas in here. Might as well not even try to split it. Or if we put these inside there, notice we have two commas. And so count will actually count the number of instances that that is found inside of a string. Now let's talk about string slicing. Slicing is a way in which I can get a particular piece of the string. And that's done with the subscript operator as well. So if I put just a number inside there, it subscripts A, or in this case, line. It subscripts the line and prints out a single character. So in this case, it prints out capital S. If it's one, it should be lowercase t. Now what if I wanted to print out TE or something like that? Well, we can use what is known as a string slice. If I add a colon and then an ending position, it prints out this. Now this is just like the range in that it's inclusive on the start, exclusive on the end. So if I wanna print TE, we print one to three. So what's going to happen here is it starts printing at index one and stops printing at three minus one. Remember, it's exclusive. So this is zero, one, two. The P is number three, but notice it does not print out the three. The ending portion is exclusive, okay? So this is what is known as string slice. So we can slice these by saying, okay, well, what if I want Mars? So we know Steven is zero through six, seven, so it starts at eight. And then I want M-A-R-Z, so it goes eight, nine, 10, 11. So if we print eight to 11, remember the ending is exclusive, so we only print mar. So we have to add one to the ending, and that's how we get mars. So that is the easiest way we can do string slicing. However, there's other ways we can do string slicing as well. Notice that all these indices start from the left-hand side of the string. If I wanna start from the right-hand side of the string, we use a negative number. Let's see what this does, okay? Let's say negative two to negative to zero. Well, that, that's gonna, something like that, okay? Notice it prints three, which is this right here. Now let's do negative three, okay? Notice it's now comma three. Negative four to negative one, that's z comma three. So as you can see what's occurring, as I lower the number from negative three to negative four, it's actually moving to the left. So whenever I use a negative number, it says start from the right. If I use a positive number, it says start from the left. Now what I can also do is I can use shortcuts. If you don't want to use shortcuts, you never have to. But with, with shortcuts, we can actually determine a specific side or a specific length that we wanna do. So in this case, we are specifying both the starting position and the ending position. If I just specify a starting position, it's gonna go all the way to the end of the string. Now remember eight starts where Mars is. And what this will do is it'll slice it and print everything starting at Mars. So that would be the same as saying length line. Okay, those are the two exact same things. Now, length line gets very complicated, doesn't look good inside the code. So if we just use the, the colon, it ends at the end of the string. Well, consequently, the other side is true as well. Say we wanna print all the way up to, but not including Mars. If we put the colon in front of the eight, what it's gonna do is gonna print zero through seven, which is Stephen comma. So that's how we can slice that as well. So the slicing operator is actually very important in that we can slice this. Now this will work for lists, this will work for strings. Remember, string is nothing more than a list. So if we said line equals line dot split comma, now line is a list. Okay, Stephen Mars. So say I wanna print out the last two elements. I start from one and go to the end, we print out Mars 37. So slicing is not just for strings. It also can be used with lists, tuples, sets, dictionaries, and things like that. So strings are very potent, very powerful, and there's many other things that you can do inside of a string. Remember, if I just do, EIR, which stands for directory, it shows you a whole bunch of things that you can do with them. Now, ends with and starts with essentially automatically uh, slices your string to see if it is true or false. So what will happen here is it will compare J-O-H-N to the very first characters of the string. It doesn't match. So starts with says, okay, as long as it begins with these characters, you're good to go. It doesn't really care what at, is at the end, but if I do step, notice Steven, it starts with S-T-E-P, H-E-N. 
Yes, it does. Well, let's change this to M. Notice it's false. Uh, consequently, on the other side, ends with, will go from the right-hand side. So if it ends with 37, which our string does, it returns true. About 39. It returns false. So you can see starts with starts comparing at the beginning of the string and only compares the number of characters that you give it. So in that case, step only compared the first four characters. Everything else, it could have been whatever it wanted to and it'll still re return true as long as those first four characters. In this case, with ends with, as long as those last two characters match with 39, it's going to return true. Obviously, with our string, it doesn't match, so this one will return false. Other ones that we can do are something like swap case strip starts with replace. However, your Zy books will show you most of how to do all of these. One of the interesting things that we can do is print line.upper. Now what that does is it generates a brand new string and converts all the lowercase letters into uppercase letters. And consequently on the other side, we can do lower and it lowers all of them. So remember, it is case sensitive whenever we compare strings. So it might, if we want something not to be case sensitive, we can just turn everything to lowercase and then compare them from there. So that is an easy way to do a case insensitive type of comparison. So strings are very powerful. Your Zybooks has plenty of information based on how strings are, and it's just gonna take some getting used to. Play with it in Python, do a print dir, and just see what all the different functions do. Go to the Python library, go to your Zybooks and see what all of them do. Strings are going to be your friend in Python.